The Thracians comprised a group of Indo-European tribes who lived in southeastern Europe during classical antiquity. Known as fearless warriors and gifted craftspeople, they could produce true works of art in gold, a testament to their skill and refinement. While much of their history and traditions have been lost over the centuries, archaeological traces and references in ancient texts give us an intriguing glimpse into the Thracian civilization. The Thracians date back to the Bronze Age period in southeastern Europe. They were among a large group of Indo-European peoples who settled in different European and Asian regions. Thrace, covering territories in present-day Bulgaria, Greece, Turkey, and Romania, was home to several Thracian tribes around 2000 BC. Archaeological evidence, ranging from settlements to artifacts, indicates the presence of these peoples in the region since ancient times. Throughout several periods in history, the Thracians met and were influenced by other cultures, particularly the Greeks, with whom they shared borders and commercial and cultural interactions. Parts of Thrace were colonized or conquered over time by the Greeks, Persians, Macedonians, and eventually the Romans. Owing to the absence of extensive written records, much of what we know about the Thracians derives from archaeological artifacts, inscriptions, and references from ancient authors such as Herodotus and Thucydides. Although the Thracians were a group of distinct tribes, they shared numerous cultural and social features that distinguished them in the Southeast European landscape. Their interactions with neighboring cultures, such as the Greeks and Persians, influenced many aspects of Thracian society as well. It was divided into several classes, including noblemen, warriors, craftspeople, farmers, and slaves. The Thracians were largely renowned as skilled warriors. Many Thracians served as mercenaries in foreign armies, especially in Greece. They were frequently depicted wearing a particular type of hat, known as a Phrygian cap, and carrying a short sword, or a kind of saber called sica. Thracian religion was mostly polytheistic, with a pantheon of gods and goddesses relating to nature and the everyday world. Among the most famous figures associated with Thracian mythology is Orpheus, who, legend has it, had musical abilities that could enthrall both the living and the dead. Thracian funerary practices have become known through archaeological findings. The Thracians buried their dead alongside several goods, often including intricately crafted gold and silver objects. These objects show not only artistic skills, but also beliefs about the afterlife. Thracian kings and nobility were often buried in massive tombs, reflecting their position in society. The Thracians were expert artisans, particularly in metalwork. Many of the artifacts which have survived to this day are jewels and ritual items in gold and silver. Thracian metalwork, especially in gold, is regarded as extraordinary. Found Thracian treasures, such as the Panagurishta treasure in Bulgaria, bear witness to their skilled workmanship. These artifacts shed light on their society, beliefs, and technical expertise. Thracians and Greeks enjoyed a significant cultural exchange due to their proximity. Thracian elements of art, mythology, and religious practices can be seen embedded in Greek culture, and vice versa. The Thracians also interacted with other neighboring peoples and nations, such as the Getai, the Dacians, the Scythians, and the Illyrians. The Odrysian kingdom was the most powerful and largest Thracian kingdom in antiquity. It particularly distinguished itself during the 5th and 4th centuries BC, and had a major influence on the Balkan region during its zenith. The kingdom was named after the Odrysian tribe, which succeeded in bringing together several Thracian tribes under its rule. The Odrysian kingdom was established by Terrus I near the turn of the 5th century BC. He was traditionally credited with rallying several Thracian tribes under a single authority. Throughout his reign, Thrace cemented himself as a significant political entity in the region. At its peak, the Odrysian kingdom stretched from the Danube River in the north to the Aegean Sea in the south, and from Macedonia in the west to the Black Sea coast in the east. This wide reach made it one of the largest states in Europe during its lifespan. 
there were significant diplomatic and mercantile interactions between the Adrian Kingdom and the Greek city-states due to their geographical proximity. The Thracian king Setulces, one of Teres I's successors, tried to forge an alliance with the Greek city of Athens, and even went so far as to embark on a military campaign against the Macedonians. Yet the Thracians often found themselves in conflict both between their different tribes and with neighboring peoples and states. The Thracians had to contend with the Persian advance during the Persian invasions of Greece in the early 5th century BC. Many Thracian tribes were subdued by the Persians and forced to provide troops for Xerxes I's armies in his campaign against Greece. Owing to the proximity between Thrace and the Greek city-states, as well as the colonies established on the Thracian coast, numerous skirmishes took place between the Thracians and the Greeks. These ranged from minor scuffles to significant battles, such as when the Athenians tried to establish control over areas of Thrace to secure access to important resources such as timber and gold. Thracian king Cotys I attempted to resist Macedon's growing influence, led by King Philip II of Macedon during the 4th century BC. While he was eventually forced to accept Macedonian supremacy, Cotys I is noted for his efforts to preserve Thracian independence. Philip II of Macedon and subsequently his son Alexander the Great spread their control over the Thracian region. Thrace became a crucial part of the empire under Macedonian rule due to its strategic location and the resources it provided. Following Alexander the Great's unexpected death, Thrace was fought over between his successors, the Diadochi, Alexander's closest generals and friends, who struggled for control of the vast empire that had been conquered. As Rome started to expand its influence in the Balkan Peninsula starting in the 3rd century BC, the Thracians came into increasing contact with them, initially through the Greek colonies that Rome had relations with. With Macedonia's defeat in the 2nd century BC and the ensuing expansion of Roman influence in the region, the Thracians often clashed with the Romans. Many of these initial squabbles were isolated in nature and concerned specific Thracian tribes. As Roman influence grew in the Balkans, the Thracians were progressively overwhelmed. Instead of a single conquering campaign, this was a process of several clashes, treaties, and subjugations over several decades. Perhaps one of the most remarkable instances of interactions between the Thracians and the Romans was the Spartacus Revolt from 73 to 71 BC. Of Thracian origin, Spartacus was captured as a slave by the Romans and turned into a gladiator in Rome. Spartacus led a major slave rebellion against the Roman state. The uprising was eventually quelled by the Roman general Marcus Licinius Crassus, but Spartacus and his followers left a long-lasting mark on Roman memory. Thrace, after its subjugation, became a Roman province in the first century AD. This prompted a process of Romanization, where Roman culture, religious, and social traditions began to mix with Thracian ones. Many Thracians went on to serve in the Roman legions and helped the empire grow in different ways. Thracian demise was not a one-off sudden event, but rather a gradual process over several centuries, shaped by many factors and interactions with other peoples and empires. The Thracian cities were rebuilt after the Roman style, and the Latin language and Roman culture started to prevail, leading to the gradual decline of the Thracian cultural identity. With the fall of the Western Roman Empire in the early Middle Ages, the Balkan region, including Thrace, was often invaded by barbarian tribes such as the Goths, Huns, and Slavs. These raids and migrations had an even greater impact on Thracian culture and demographics. Following the breakup of the Roman Empire, Thrace became a key element of the Byzantine Empire. While the Roman cultural legacy continued under the Byzantines, the region was further Hellenized, with Greek emerging as the dominant language. Notwithstanding their decline and eventual assimilation by other cultures and empires, the Thracians left a legacy evident in several areas. Although the Thracians themselves did not leave a substantial corpus of literature, they are frequently mentioned in ancient texts, particularly by Greek and Roman authors. These descriptions, albeit often written from an external viewpoint, 
are valuable for rebuilding facets of Thracian culture and history. The revived interest in Thracian culture led to its commemoration in several Balkan countries, especially Bulgaria. Museums, exhibitions, and academic studies have focused on rediscovering and celebrating Thracian history. The Thracian legacy pervades many strands of the history, art, and culture of southeastern Europe and the remains of their civilization are still an interesting and significant part of Western history.